Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using Universe Sandbox Square to try to discover what would happen if Trappist system, that the system that has been in use very recently because there is seven really really beautiful Earth-like planets orbiting around a very relatively small uh, super cool red dwarf known as Trappist-1. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about what if this system actually existed in our solar system. In other words, what if we were to place this whole thing close to us? Let's find out in this video and welcome to What The Math. So here we are in our own solar system and let's actually explore maybe three or four different possibilities of TRAPPIST-1 being in our solar system. The first possibility is if our sun was actually a dual star with TRAPPIST-1 or a binary star with TRAPPIST-1 as its partner. So we're going to actually decelerate time here a little bit and go under TRAPPIST and basically place it in balanced motion around our sun, maybe around this far. So there you go. They're going to be orbiting around one another. And as they orbit, uh, well, there's going to be a bit of a wobble because they're going to have a very center in between them. But I'm also going to actually add planets to, um, to TRAPPIST-1. So let's actually add some planets here just so that it actually looks a little bit more realistic. Now, I think it doesn't have all the new planets in it yet. Yeah, it only has the old three planets. And you'll see that even these three planets will actually not stay in this orbit for a very long time. So these three planets will very likely disappear pretty quickly, but let's actually see what happens to the rest of our solar system. So we're gonna accelerate them just a little bit and watch what happens to both uh, the Trappist planets and also to Earth. So if these two stars were orbiting around one another that close, it's very unlikely that they would have any planets in a certain radius around them because they, they're going to create a lot of, um, well, essentially gravitational waves. They're basically going to be creating a lot of disturbances that will prevent stable orbits from forming around them. It's going to take a, a very, very long time for us to actually see if any of the planets are going to have stable orbits. But chances are that uh, the, the three or four planets um, at a farther away distance will be able to stay in this orbit. But uh, Mercury and possibly Venus and maybe even Earth might actually get flung out and fly away. As you can see, Venus has already changed its orbit. So did Earth, acquiring a very different orbit from before with changing eccentricity and also changing semi-major axes. As you can see, its orbit is not as stable as it used to be. But uh, unfortunately, the Trappist planets are gone, except for maybe this one that seems to be coming back because it also has a very eccentric orbit. All right, so that's simulation number one. Not maybe as fun as I hoped it would be, and mostly because um, all of the other planets have disappeared. Let's try this again, but this time put the Trappist star a little bit farther away. Maybe this time in between uh, Sun and Mercury. And so here we go, seven planets and TRAPPIST-1 itself. Let's see if any of them actually do survive this and if any of them stay in a stable orbit around the binary star that is Sun-TRAPPIST. We're actually going to just use the trails here, accelerate time a little bit more and watch all of them basically fly away into the abyss. That's mostly because uh, there's a lot of gravitational interactions between the Sun and of course other planets and uh, chances are most of these planets will just uh, become the planets of the sun now, not really TRAPPIST-1. But TRAPPIST still has at least three planets orbiting around it, or even four, I think. Yeah, there's at least four planets. We're going to take a look at what they look like in a second. Um, our own Mercury has unfortunately gained a little bit too much velocity because it passed too close to TRAPPIST-1. So this, uh, this star right here, TRAPPIST-1, is now going to be actually... Um, causing quite a lot of disturbances to the inner terrestrial planets. And there's a very high chance that Venus will also at some uh, point will fly away and maybe even Earth, especially if they approach um, this system a little bit closer. And the planets that remained in orbit around TRAPPIST are TRAPPIST-1b, uh, a very nice looking but somewhat hot world with 300 degrees degree, um, Celsius temperature. TRAPPIST-1c, very similar conditions here. 
and Trappist 1E was slightly cooler, 276 degrees Celsius, and what seems to be a sign of collision from something. I don't really know what, but something made it collide with something else. It does look really, really cool though. An absolutely brilliant looking planet. Okay. But it looks like, once again, this is not a very stable simulation, so we might need to try this again, and this time place Trappist a little bit farther away. Maybe somewhere where it would most likely be, that is, in the location of the other gas giants. So this time we're going to place Trappist right between Jupiter and Saturn, and then also place its planets as well. And so here's our Trappist system with the seven planets that are actually in relatively stable orbit, and there is our sun in the distance, there, if there it is, you can actually see it now because I removed the trails. And so this seems to be a pretty stable system. I'm going to run this for a little bit just to see what's going to happen to our other gas giants. But um, it may actually look like that I've, I was able to find a location where Trappist hypothetically could actually exist. Now, with time, it will probably cause a little bit of disturbance and cause Jupiter and Saturn to change their orbits a little bit. But for now, though, it has its own system. It definitely has its own planets and the other planets specifically the terrestrial planets like earth mars venus and mercury are not really affected by this very much because they're a little bit too far away now let's actually see if earth um orbit has been affected at all we can actually go under here and check the eccentricity and the um semi major axes and it looks like it's, it's too far away to affect earth currently so it doesn't really cause many effects to the inner terrestrial planets, but it might cause a few effects to Jupiter and Saturn. Only time will tell, of course. I can maybe uh, try to see if uh, there's any effect from Trappist by doing the following. I'm gonna remove all of the objects that are actually not needed for us, leave only Jupiter and Saturn and a few other um, farther away objects, and basically accelerate time now, and just kind of see... Uh, oh, there we go. That wasn't... didn't take very long. I was about to say how long it takes for Jupiter and Saturn to change directions, but looks like I was totally wrong. So because uh, Trappist does actually cause a, a huge gravitational pull on our own Sun, the Sun will actually change directions, and this is why Jupiter and Saturn will very likely lose direction as well. So I spoke too soon. But the terrestrial planets might actually not be affected by this. They, might, they will still be orbiting around the Sun. And I can demonstrate this to you by doing the following. So we're going to place Trappist right here. We're also going to maybe remove all of the particles and dust and fragments. Accelerate time a little bit. And so let's see what happens. So Sun has changed direction. Are the terrestrial planets still in orbit around it? It looks like it. And it seems like Trappist was also able to capture Jupiter, making it its own planet. But as you can see, the terrestrial planets are orbiting just fine. Their orbits have changed just a little bit, but not enough to cause dramatic changes dramatic or have dramatic effects. Uh, it's very interesting, though, how Jupiter was actually able to be captured by Trappist. Let's see what Jupiter looks like from, uh, from this distance. So it's become a very super hot Jupiter, essentially. It's actually a type of... Uh, planet that we've discovered. It's called Super Hot Jupiter. It's a gas giant that orbits around a star very, very closely. So maybe, the, the just maybe somewhere in the universe, one of the Jupiter, Super Hot Jupiters was actually born in the same way where I just created it by accident. It passed by a red dwarf too close to it and was captured just in the same manner. Earth is... Oh, it's a little bit hot here. 31 degrees Celsius. Interesting. So yes, Earth has changed its orbit with time and will very likely change even more. The um, only reason it's so hot though, is not because it's actually closer to the sun, but because there's actually another star warming it up from the other direction. So there's actually now a lot more seasons, a lot of interesting seasons. So like right now, this is the winter because the earth is on the other side. And when it's between the two stars, you're going to have uh, summer and mini summer, I guess. Or I guess there's going to be a lot more hotter here on this side because the Earth is warmed by two stars, even though the other one is a little bit farther away. But it's definitely affecting the temperature. And the last simulation I wanted to do is if I place Trappist somewhere in the Kuiper's Belt or even beyond it. So what if I place it somewhere really, really far away, uh, somewhere in the distance of about 60 astronomical units or so. So right here. Let's add all of the planets 
And now let's just run the simulation uh, for a little bit and see what actually happens to our sun and to the other planets as well. So we might actually have to um, remove some of the other objects so the simulation runs a little bit faster and then focus on the sun and also focus on the planets like Earth. Now I'm actually going to create a berry center because I want to see where the berry center of these two stars is and it's actually right here. It's far far away um, close to the orbit of Jupiter so that means that the sun is actually going to be making quite a large circle here. As you can see this is going to be the orbit of the sun and that's the orbit of Trappist which is, this is actually very very interesting. Now this creates a really interesting situation because I would like to actually see if any of the other planets will be captured by Trappist. So let's maybe just go here for a second and remove the Trappist's own planets. I'm also going to remove some of the inner uh, planets in our own system, like for example Mercury because it moves a little bit too fast and slows down the game too much. But Venus, Earth and Mars will stay where they are. And we're going to now watch what happens to all of the planets as Trappist slowly makes its way around the Sun and the Sun makes its way around Trappist. So right now the Sun is actually moving. You can't really tell, but... Well, actually you can't tell by looking here. It's moving at a speed of about uh, 20 something meters per second. Very slow, but it's definitely moving. And where is it moving? Well, it's moving in the direction of this line that you see. Because it's actually orbiting the Trappist star. But because it's doing it so slow, there's a very, very high chance that none of the planets will actually be affected this time. So I'm going to accelerate this a little bit more just to show you that even as Trappist makes its way around the solar system, it only affects the outer objects. So a lot of these um, Kuiper Belt objects, a lot of these dwarf planets, including, of course, possibly Pluto, will definitely be affected by it. Maybe even Neptune. Neptune too might be affected by this, although not as much as the Kuiper Belt objects. But the inner planets are not going to be affected by it. They're still in the same orbit as they were, and I can actually double check that by going to, for example, Earth and looking at the semi-major axes and also eccentricity. They haven't really changed that much. Uh, as a matter of fact, the semi-major axis of the actual orbital radius from the Sun is pretty much exactly the same. So you can kind of see that the sun is following a path and the planets are just kind of orbiting around it. And because we don't really detect any motion from our sun that you see right here, and because uh, we don't really see any serious gravitational effects from a potential brown dwarf somewhere on the outskirts of our solar system, it's very likely that there is really uh, no nemesis or no killer star on the outskirts, as so many of you ask me to talk about. I guess people like to have conspiracy theories, but you know what? This is all about science, and the science tells us that, well, we only detect some gravitational effects um, on the uh, dwarf planets, and because of that, we think maybe there is a, uh, an object called Planet 9, somewhere far, far away uh, from our sun. But that object is definitely not as big as Trappist. It would only be just a little bit smaller than Neptune. Well, anyway, so that's essentially what would happen to our solar system if you place Trappist-1 and possibly its uh, own planets around our solar system. As you can see, it does have quite a dramatic effect on our solar system, but it only affects uh, certain types of planets depending on where it's located. Closer to the sun, it affects terrestrial planets. Right in the middle here, it affects the gas giants. And if you place it on the outskirts, you can see that Neptune and Uranus um, have actually changed their orbits just a little bit. As a matter of fact, uh, they have changed them quite a lot. But overall, our system will still be fine, and most importantly, Earth seems to be doing just fine, no matter where you place Trappist. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and thank you so much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Possibly share this with someone who enjoys watching video game-based education, or who likes to learn about space, sciences, and other stuff. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back to learn something completely different, and possibly watch me play a video game. See you later, space out, and as always, bye bye. Now, before we finish, let's go back to our planet Earth and place another Trappist pretty much right next to it. Let's see what happens if you place it at the same distance where the moon is, 300,000 
kilometers. So right around here. So what if Trappist was the moon of Earth? Ready? Steady? Go. Oh boy. Yeah, that's not looking very good for us. That is definitely not looking very good for us. The Earth is basically being uh, torn apart by the tidal forces. And gone. Didn't even take a day. It died within a few hours. Oh no, it's still there. It's still there. Look at that. There's a little chunk here. Tiny Earth chunk that's left. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.